Hello, hello everybody. We are back on the Tortuga server and today we are going to be looking at a flower farm. So let's head over to where I built the flower farm so we can take a peek as to how it works. And here we are. It is nestled right up against the Oppo Industries building. For those of you who watched that episode, uh, you'll remember that. So it's pretty simple. Uh, let's go ahead and just throw some scaffolding down so we can see up here. The way this works is we've got dispensers underneath. Let's see if we can't go ahead and check that out from below. Yeah, so we've got the dispensers underneath. These guys are full of bone meal. There is so much bone meal in this system, I can't even. They all have a redstone line running to them that is then connected up here. At a high level, what we've got here is a hopper clock, the Etho style one, where we've got items that are moving between these two hoppers. And then based on the signals from the comparators, this redstone block will move back and forth. Right now, we've actually got these two redstone blocks pushed up against the hoppers, so they're always disabled. But if we go ahead and come over here and flip the switch, boom, the clock will start moving again and we can actually see this in action. And then over here, for those interested, what we've got going is a redstone line that comes out when this block is in this position and one line that goes down to fire the dispensers, which is what's bone mealing the dirt. And then the other line comes over here to this system. And what this is doing is turning the pulse that comes from the redstone block into two pulses, one of which is significantly delayed versus the other. So what this mechanism here is, this one, two, three block part, and then you can see it repeated back here. This will go ahead and change a signal into a pulse. So this pulse is too long, so we want to use these to turn it into an immediate pulse. And then because the dispensers need one pulse to emit the water over here, and then one pulse to bring the water back in. That's why we've got those two lines. So this first signal is what is sending the water out, and then the slightly delayed signal over here is what is bringing the water back in, and that all works in coordination to create this system. And then the last component of this farm is this sort of ugly looking setup over here. And that's where we can take the seeds that we don't need Go ahead and pop up here and throw them in this top box. And what that'll do is go ahead and hopper the seeds out of the chest into the composter. And then from the composter, we'll get bone meal, which then feeds back into the hopper lines that are powering or providing the dispensers with bone meal. So if we want to load this up with bone meal, we can put stuff in this chest if we've got extra seeds laying around. I don't know about you, but I feel like I always have way more wheat seeds than I need just as a side effect of being alive in a Minecraft world. We can put seeds there, put bone meal there, and then our flowers come out here. So the question I'd be asking me if I were you is why do we need so many flowers, right? So that's got a simple answer. We are looking to expand the number of things that we are selling at the Mesa General Store in the shopping district. So right now we sell terracotta, which makes a lot of sense given that it is a very terracotta looking build. So people go there, they expect terracotta, they get terracotta, everybody's happy. I think a nice thing to complement that and sort of expand the amount of stuff that we're selling in our store is dyes. We don't do the dyed terracotta. My assumption has always been that people can make that if they want, but now you can come to the shop, you can buy your terracotta, you can buy your dyes, and whatever build you're doing, as long as it involves terracotta, we should be on people's list of places to shop from now on. So that's great. Let's uh, go ahead and pop over the shopping district to check how that's doing. Every time I pass by Zgred's uh, nether tunnel, I'm just in awe. This is such a pretty build. I love this so much. So this is Mesa General for those who have not seen it before. As you can tell, it is Mesa themed. So let's uh, go ahead and check on our sales. So this is the new place that we built to house the dice. As you can see, we do not sell all the dies yet, but hopefully we will shortly. 
I do think I have most of the primary colors. Uh, when I say primary colors, I mean the dyes that can't be made from combining other dyes. Notably, we are missing black, but I have been talking to Oppo and Omi, and they're th saying that perhaps we could work out a deal where they have the black dye from their squid farm, I think it is. Uh, they sell it in the shop, they keep all the proceeds, and then the advantage for us is that we still have sort of this one-stop shop for all the different dyes. So I think that I think that works out well, I think that's really fair. But let's check out sales. Okay, nothing on blue, nothing on yellow, nothing on orange. No, 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 no. Well, that's a bit disappointing, but I have had this up for a couple days. We have made some sales, so this has not been a total bust. I think we probably need to work on getting some of the other colors built up. But yeah, that's exciting. We could always check terracotta sales as well. Looks like we did sell a couple terracottas. Ooh, nine diamonds. Anything else? That looks like that might be it. I think these may have been from uh, Mr. Kyson. So great. Uh, and we don't have anything for sale there. So nine diamonds. Nothing to uh, shake your head at or whatever that saying is. I'm not quite sure. Uh, we are also selling some miscellaneous things, but these don't really sell that often. That's fine. Reconodox Mesa General, now selling dye. So if you're interested, you can come in, you can get your terracotta, you can get your dye, you can make your green terracotta, which I'm not going to do right now because I don't need it. Slowly and surely building up the usefulness of the store. Also, how could I have forgotten the shopping district is now in Christmas mode. Let's go ahead and uh, put our elytra on. <laughs> Sorry about that. And then take a look at the shopping district as a whole. As you can tell, everything has been snowed over. This is normally a mushroom biome. You can sort of see that over here. But in celebration of the winter holidays, we have gone ahead. I haven't, but others have gone ahead and covered the entire island in snow so it's really cool it creates a great winter feel right now and then sort of the centerpiece of it all is this christmas tree over here let's see if i can land sure can omi built this christmas tree and i believe that starting in the month of december so now all the tortugans on the server are going to start putting different christmas presents under the christmas tree and it'll be great fun so yeah, pretty good. And how could I forget the great Christmas hat texture pack? I think it's a texture pack that Nuke, the Nuke Lore, who's another player on the server, has been having everyone install that lets you turn a pumpkin into a Christmas hat. It's fun to see everybody on the server wearing these cute little Santa hats. And there's yet another thing that I wanted to go ahead and share with you guys today. If we peek right over these bookcases like so, you can see some sandstone walls that are out beyond the lighthouse building we built last episode. What's going on there, you ask? And if we look out the window, we can see it a little bit closer, and it looks like we've got a Arabian-style build going on there, although the tower at the corner of the walls has been modified, let's say, by some of the other players to look a little bit like people. People are saying it looks Mexican or Spanish. Um, but yeah, the little sandstone blocks here and there and the mustache were not in the original design, but hey, he looks so happy like this. But yeah, let's uh, go ahead and use my mini nether hub that I've got set up for certain places around my base to go check that out a little closer. And if I haven't shown it before, this is the mini nether hub. So this goes to the garden up here. Uh, we've got a portal up to the mob farm. A little unfinished business going on here. But this is the newest addition, which goes to that little Arabian village that we were just looking at. So we are now inside of the tower that we were looking at before. And yep, yeah, here you can see it close up. There are a lot of boxes sitting here. You'll excuse me. This is definitely a work in progress. But yeah, I believe people have named him Paco. Yeah, welcome to Paco Towers. Although there's only one tower. So I, I don't know about towers. 
<laughs> and then uh, another sign that says Ole. So yeah, if you wanted to see the original design, just imagine it without these uh, modifications. But hey, they're fun. So yeah, what's inside? More box mess. This is sort of our staging area for doing this build. But if we go ahead and take a peek around, you can see that we've sort of got these small houses that are shoved right up against each other that are kind of in this Middle Eastern theme. Uh, like I said, definitely a work in progress. But the idea here is that this area can be a really fun place, a really useful place even, to go ahead and do different mini games. The game that we've been using to sort of test the layout has just been a simple hide and seek game. Oops, ouch, I did not mean to do that. Uh, where, let's say, two players are the hiders and two players are the seekers. And what you do is the seekers will wait for 10 seconds or something, and then the hiders are usually crouching and trying to keep away from them, right? We've got this courtyard here, so there's a lot of different paths for you to take. So in this case, we've got this ladder up, and then you're sort of on this second tier where you can sort of run around and hide. I think we've been going for a lot of like Assassin's Creed sort of vibes with this setup. Uh, also Aladdin, because <laughs> there's a couple people on the server that are big fans of Aladdin. The question I'd have for all of you guys is with what you've seen so far, are there any ideas you have for different like hiding places, passageways, layouts. I'll give you guys a quick example, which is pretty simple. We have this painting here that actually has this secret place so that maybe if you're cornered in that house, you can go ahead and take this and sort of escape to that garden. So yeah, if you've got any ideas that kind of fit what we're trying to do here, please let me know in the comments. It'd be super helpful. And it is getting dark, so we need to sleep so we don't have a creeper blow up this whole place, which would make me very sad. <laughs> and if we go ahead and take flight, we can get a better look at this place from above. And as you can probably see, we had to take a big chunk of land out in order to get the terrain set up to actually build this place. And thank you very much to both Omi and Oppo for helping us do that. And the other thing to point out is you can probably see how there's this small wall and then this larger one out here. Reason for that is while I would like this mini game area, this Arabian village, if you will, to be about this size, I think this is only going to be one section of a much larger build where I would like to build out sort of a whole Arabian city and have like sort of different reasons for all the different sections to exist. I think that would be really cool. I'm thinking this is going to sort of be the mega project for this season, and I'm really excited about this. And with that, I think we are done with today's video. If you liked the video, please consider liking the video. And if you really liked the video and want to see more, please hit that subscribe button. And just as another reminder, if you'd like to play here on the Tortuga server, there'll be a link to how to do that down in the description. I will see you guys later.